All right, hey guys, good morning. Uh, Dr. Sean again here. We're going to talk about some more always exciting urine questions. Uh, that kind of makes it fun, isn't it? Talking about urine. Heather's over here joining me. Give a little shout out there, girly. Hello. Good See, morning. right there. <laughs> Silent and quiet from the corner. Uh, we got the king in the background today, uh, Connor, and then Elvis next to him. Um, so, my little man, he gave me a calendar this year, which I thought was outstanding. Uh, absolutely love it. it it's, it's all his school pictures from when he was a little kid all the way up. So, as a parent, that's kind of fun to do. So, we're going to talk about a couple things. Heather had uh, mentioned that you guys had several questions that we're going to try and address today and get to for you. And I'll just kind of show you how I think. That's how I do it. So that's kind of my map. Uh, it's just a real simple, easy way of, of keeping my thoughts together for you. So let's go through our first one. What we got? First question is, why do you run the integrated urinalysis panel? Okay, so why do we run the integrated urinalysis panel? That's what we're looking at. You know, the first thing's first, guys. To see is to know, to not see is to guess. Always, always, always know that. So you go through it. Now, the next thing is it's a lab, right? It's a laboratory. So it's a lab result that the medical model has been running urine tests for 200 years, okay? We've got just crap tons of data. So it's a very acknowledged, acceptable lab. So when you go through that, you think, okay, you have a nation of people that are educated that when I go to a doctor, I get tested. They run blood work. They run blood pressure cuffs they put on me. They check my heart. They always have me pee in a cup. If you're an unlucky guy, the glove goes on. You know how it works, right? So the idea is they run tests all the time looking for things. People expect the doctor to run tests. So run one. That's the first thing I would tell you. It improves patient compliance. If you've got a test that says, Mrs. Smith, this is what's wrong with you. It's really hard for them to argue with you. It's like when we do the Cairo thing. If they're not losing, what's the rule? They're cheating. And they say, well, I'm not cheating. Then they're not following it. And if they're not cheating, they're not following, what are they doing? They're cheating. That's how it works, right? You know what you know. So because of the lab being so concrete, being an accepted standard in the medical model, we got CPT codes for it, right? They're used to this. Stay in their lane. Let them know. It also allows the doctor to see the holes in the bucket, all right? You see the holes in where this person's struggling at. Maybe you've got someone that's got leaky gut or a toxicity issue or maybe they've got lymphatic problems or digestive issues and you're adjusting them, you're doing all your work, but they're still sick and they're not getting over that hump. It gives you a way to say, okay, why are they still sick? I'm doing everything I know. I'm palpating. I'm examining. I'm looking. I can't seem to find the answer. It shows you a possible choice. You know, Jason and I were talking, and he was discussing the idea of, you know, the science behind all this and the visceral-somatic and the somatovisceral. Guys, this is visceral-somatic. This is it. This is the organs and the organ tissues and the ten organ systems and how they're expressing themselves through the body physically. It lets you see it. So it's a huge thing. It also is really good to tell you where the body is spending its resources. Where is the body spending its energy? Where is it spending the money that it makes? Where is it spending its fuel trying to stay healthy? The urine is measuring homeostasis. How is your body maintaining and staying in balance. Where is it getting beat up? Where can you help it? That's what it does. What's our next one? Number two, you have been running the integrated urinalysis for years. What is the most important thing that you would tell a new provider that is just starting to run them? You know, a couple simple easy things. So we're running this, we've been doing it, I'm two decades in, okay? New guy, never done it before. Keep it simple. Don't get complex. Don't try to read into things more than what there are. Don't say, oh my God, I got 95 things I have to do with this patient. Do one. Keep it simple. We do weight loss. What do you really do when you're doing chirothin? Change your diet. That's what you really do. Here's your drops. Change your diet. Keep it simple. It's not this elaborate, difficult thing. Right? Jason's put together that little sheet for you guys to help make it easy to keep it simple. That's the idea behind this. Slow and steady wins the race. That's my next one. Don't do too much too fast. Take it easy. Take it slow. One thing, two at the most. Watch what it does for a while. Let the body adapt. Let it do its thing. And as you watch that and you see it evolving, then you move on with that. Then, you know, people like tests. Right? People love tests. So I tell a new provider, 
Make it part of your routine. You know, in my office, guys, nobody comes through my door. You come in for an adjustment, you're getting a urine test done. Right? Why? It's part of my routine. They're coming to a doctor's office. They expect to have tests run. Don't you examine them? Isn't the lab an internal examination? Isn't it an internal body audit? Isn't that what you're really doing? Sure you are. And I'm going to look at you physically on the outside. I'm going to run all my orthopedic tests. I'm going to write them all down. I'm going to run all my laboratory tests and jot them all down. And, you know, just remember, people are trained to accept this. This is what this is their model. They're trained to accept this. They expect them to be run. Run them. And as you run these tests, it gives you little insight and information and it betters your results with the patient. What's our next one? The next one is what is the benefit to the patient? Okay. So obviously there's multiple benefits here. So let's start with the easy one. It's an early warning sign. That's the one you hear me say it all the time. It's an early warning sign of things that are coming. It predicts the future. This is what's going to happen in your future for you, Mrs. Smith. It's telling me this is what's going to happen. And guys, it's 100%. It's never wrong. If they do not change the course of the ship, they're going over the falls. Ask the Titanic. How will that work for them? Right? Turn left. Turn left. Turn left. Nope on the bottom of the ocean, right? So you have to look at that and say, gosh, if we don't make change, this is what's coming. It tells them what to avoid. It says, look, you're really struggling here, here, and here. We gotta change this thing. We gotta do something different. You know, it, then if, you, if, if you're telling what to avoid, then in theory, it prevents illness. I read an article the other day that chiropractic prevents cancer, right? Do you know how they did it? Through weight loss. Encouraging weight loss. That was the whole article. That as a physician, you help someone, encourage them to lose weight, you decrease obesity, and by doing that, it helps prevent cancer. And they're right. I'm not treating it, but I can help. That's why you're running this. right? It's giving you a way to help prevent illness. It's finding the cause of the unknowns. How many times do we have patients come in that have something chronic? They have something autoimmune. They've got something, that, oh, it's genetic. Really? This is epigenetics. That's what we're doing. You want to see epigenetics at work, run the IUP. That's what it is, guys. It's epigenetics in front of you. How is your environment and your body's perception of that environment manifesting itself? That's what you're doing. And then, man, if I can tweak it, then look at what it does. It's really fantastic. On top of that, it builds confidence in the doctor. It's really easy to be talking to someone when you know what to look for. You already know what's happening inside that body. Doesn't matter what they say, you know what their body's doing because their lab is telling you. It gives you peace of mind. It gives the patient peace of mind. Oh, man, my doctor ran this test. I know what we're doing. I know what we're trying to avoid. And the last thing above all else, guys, is physicians. You have to give your patient hope. If you don't give your patient hope, hope for something better, hope that they can feel good again, hope that they can get their lives back, hope that they can get perfect health, if you don't do that, they can't. Right? It's just how it works. It's that simple. That is the benefit to the patient. It's the benefit to the doctor. That's the benefit to a new practitioner. All three of these are what we want. Yes? So Celia says, people absolutely love that we are including the IUP from your lab and feel it's much more inclusive care. So big props to you guys. Well, thanks guys, we appreciate that. It's good, I'm thrilled for it because you know, it, it's something that we, we, when I was talking with Jason about this several years ago, we were talking about integrating this with the program and stuff, it's so much you can do to help your patients, right? And that's really what it's all about. We all study things. We study techniques and adjusting and reading x-rays and supplements and all this stuff. It's to help. This just gives you a better way to do it, right? So it's great. All right, guys, that's it for today. I'm going to go shoot a couple videos for Facebook, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.